Hello, welcome to my videos. Today I'm talking about a very important concept, the Vertical Face Restore 7. And really this is the culmination of over 10 years work. And really I'm grateful to one of my patients who came to me with very specific requirements in what she was looking to achieve. And she f had felt that she looked more tired and had more facial aging. And she said to me, Dr. De Silva, please can you look at putting this together for me and for other patients who may be feeling the same way. Now, facial aging, well, in a way, all of us have some loose skin, loss of volume, effects of gravity with time, and no one really wants to be looking older and more tired. And many patients who come to see me express that they feel like they're in their 30s inside, but often their facial appearance doesn't reflect how they're feeling inside. And so what the Vertical Face Restore 7 is, it's a holistic turnkey approach in terms of restoring your kind of natural appearance, rejuvenating your face by approaching the face as a whole. So looking at a number of different aspects of the face and how they age and restoring the anatomy to where it used to be. And most patients having this technique will look at least seven years younger, if not 10 to 15 years younger. However, not everyone will need each of the seven key steps but many patients will need more more than one or two of them so in terms of the vertical face restore seven what is this so in terms of things well first of all let's have a look at a patient so this lady well she's her preoperative photo she just looks tired and there's more fullness along the jawline there's shadows around the face there's loose skin around the eyes and everything looks to have dropped just down with gravity. Now, this patient of mine, just nine days after surgery, well, she looks more youthful. Her jawline is more V-shaped and feminine and she just has a more um, rejuvenated appearance. She looks many years younger and yes, there is swelling and things a little bit exaggerated at this point, but this is only nine days after the surgery. So what is actually happening? Well, in terms of gravity, this is a photograph from the 30s. You can see her jawline is nice and V-shaped and that looks youthful and attractive. And just about these areas have dropped down with gravity. And as a result of this, there's looseness, there's laxity, there's jowls, there's changes around the face that just give a more tired appearance. Now, in terms of the vertical face resource seven, well, what we're actually doing is we're lifting the anatomy to where it used to be and lifting along the jawline, recreates that natural jawline, it improves the neck, lifting around the eyelids, smoothen out, smoothens out the loose skin and lifts the brow where it used to be and just gives a more natural appearance. So what we're going to do is talk about each of the seven key concepts of the vertical face restore. And in terms of that, well, the loss of the V-shaped jawline, it's really a deep plane facelift that's going to restore that anatomy to where it used to be. And I'll describe what that means to you. A more square shaped jawline, well, this can be really the buckle fat that's full and uh, creates this fullness in some individuals. And sometimes like a smaller chin, well, a patient could really benefit from chin implant in order to improve the angle and proportions of this face, of this area of the face. A more tired eye appearance or preservation blepharoplasty, a lateral or temporal brow lift will restore this anatomy to where it used to be and look natural. Deeper lines around the face, nasolabial, marinette lines, well, these shadows tend to look more tired, lifting with the deep plane facelift, restoring natural volume with fat transfer and in some individuals lengthening of the lip area shortening this with a lip lift can really enhance this aging of the skin enlarged pores fine lines sun damage resulting in pigmentation well the gold standard luminous co2 laser will restore this it will smoothen out the skin and make it more even we can enhance recovery by using sedation anesthesia. We can use other techniques such as oxygen therapy to enhance recovery after surgery. And then finally, maintenance. Now we can do surgery that will rejuvenate your appearance, 
but many of my patients come back to me once a year and we just do a little bit of maintenance and that will make the surgery last longer. My name is Dr. Julian De Silva. I'm an oculofacial ba surgeon based in London and this is surgery that I do every day for my patients and really to what I'm talking to you today is a combination of 10 years work. This can never constitute a medical consultation. It's really for education and informative purposes. So let's talk about the first key concept of the vertical face restore. Loss of this V-shaped jawline. And with natural aging, the jawline becomes squarer and fuller, and that just creates a more tired appearance. And when with this area is lifted with a vertical deep plane facelift, it restores this V-shaped jawline that looks so feminine and natural and rejuvenated. Now, the vertical face restore lifts in an upward vertical direction. And this is quite different from, say, a common lateral SMAS facelift, because SMAS facelift surgery tends to pull in a direction towards the ear, which doesn't create quite the same natural appearance and doesn't restore the anatomy in the same way. Now, when I completed vertical deep plane face restore, I release the ligaments around the face and that enables the face to be lifted so naturally and so V-shaped. And that's not necessarily the same in other techniques. The other thing that this isn't is adding a lot of volume along the jawline. Now, we've all seen celebrities and people who have just got, they've had fillers around the face that make everything smoother however it doesn't recreate that v shape to the jawline so it doesn't necessarily look younger it can look smoother but not necessarily more youthful now in terms of vertical face restore what actually changes with time is this area drops down and as this area ages and comes down with gravity, well, with surgery, you can release those ligaments. We can lift this anatomy to where it used to be. The neck is also an important part of, of a deep plane facelift. Because you can see in this patient of mine, there's jowls, there's fullness here. Well, this really, these changes in the neck have come about because of changes partly in the face. So when this area is lifted with a deep plane facelift, the neck is also improved. Now there are other considerations as well. Sometimes there can be laxity in the underlying muscle in this area, the platysma, tightening this muscle a bit like a corset will restore the angle between the jawline and the neck. And sometimes there are other considerations. There can be accumulation of fat in this area. There can be more prominent salivary glands. And these are also important considerations, the deeper soft tissues. And if you have a smaller chin, well, sometimes augmenting the chin can also improve this area. Now, the second element of the vertical face restore is the more square-shaped fullness to the jawline. And in some patients, this area can just be more prominent. And in this area is a fat pad called a buccal fat. And in some individuals, reducing and reshaping that buccal fat really enhances the appearance in that individual. Now, I personally find that this can sometimes correspond in patients who have a smaller chin. And it's important that the face, the detail around this is looked at because there can be asymmetry and one side may need further reduction than the other. I have also described a, a novel technique by which the buccal fat can be reshaped on by the same scar as the deep plane facelift. And that means avoiding additional scars inside the mouth, which is how buccal fat is commonly reshaped. And I've presented that now internationally. What about the chin? Well, we can see in this patient of mine, the patient has a chin that sits fat quite a few millimeters behind the lower lip. And bringing the chin forward enables us to improve the shape of the jawline and the neck. And the reason is, in this, in this photograph, the neck looks tired because it almost starts where this patient's chin is. And when we bring the chin forward and combine that with a vertical face restore and a deep plane facelift, it restores that angle that looks more youthful and fresher. And, and, and a chin implant, in a way, it needs to be customized to the individual. Often the tails of the implant need to be shaped and refined because we don't want to make the chin wider. We want to preserve that V-shape. 
often I'll use two tiny um, titanium screws that will ensure the implant lasts long term and does not move. So there are little, um, there are little details that are important around this. What about a more tired eye appearance? Well, whenever we look at someone, we look at their eyes. And so this is a very important aspect of looking at facial aging. And the vertical face restore, well, it means restoring that eye appearance to how it used to be. And preservation blepharoplasty means preserving the natural anatomy, it means avoiding taking away a lot of the soft tissues, which can result in a more different appearance. And so in this patient, reducing that loose skin, reducing the puffiness where the fat become, has become prominent and lifting this area with a temporal brow lift. It's just rejuvenated this area. It just looks more youthful and attractive. I, I always ask patients to bring an old photograph because I can use that as a template for the surgery and tailor the surgery to you, the individual, and see how your eyes have aged. Because in a way, everyone's eyes are unique to you. And it really means preservation in terms of avoiding a lot of removal of fat, avoid, avoidance of um, overlifting. This is a photograph of Renee Zellweger, who a few years ago had a procedure that made her look quite different. Now, with preservation, blepharoplasty, and lateral brow lift, we can really restore the anatomy naturally, and that will give a more youthful look, but preserve your natural appearance. Now the mid part of the face, well, there can be deep lines in this area. Sometimes these are called the nasolabial and marinette lines. And these tend to be like a sign of aging. And these can be very difficult to restore non-surgically. Fillers in this area are often used, but it's very difficult sometimes to really restore this without lifting this area back to where it used to be. And that's called um, deep plane facelifting. And I also do some fat transfer to restore some of the volume that you've lost in this area. And fat transfer, what that means is we take some of your own fat, usually around the belly button with a hidden scar, a tiny mark on the inside of the belly button. We concentrate that fat and putting a little bit of that fat in these areas just softens everything, makes everything smoother. And within your natural fat, there are regenerative cells which tend to improve the quality of the skin and make everything smoother and more even. And fat transfer, well, sometimes in the US that's, that's marketed as stem cell facelifting. It's not true stem cell facelifting in that stem cells are, can really only be taken from the bone marrow but regenerative cells within your fat certainly play a, a useful role in improving the quality of the soft tissues and skin. The other element, in some patients, there can be lengthening of this distance between the nose and the lip. And lengthening of the lip just throws off some of the balance of the face. And in some patients, shortening that distance with a lip lift procedure can really improve the facial harmony and balance of the individual's face and can really make you look more youthful. Now, not everyone is going to need a lip lift, but some patients where this length has, has enlarged, shortening this distance from anything from four to six millimeters can give like a, a, a finesse touch to uh, face off surgery because it just improves your, your facial balance and harmony. Now, where things can look unnatural is where too much volume is put in this area. Now, too much volume can be in the form of fillers and that can result in this kind of like augmented look that just doesn't look quite right. right. And this is a photograph of Donatella where just the air around her mouth just does not look quite natural. Now, with conservative surgery and deep face restore, we can restore the anatomy to where it used to be and keep things looking natural. What about skin aging and fine lines? Now, fine lines, enlarged pores, lines around the mouth. Sometimes those are called smoker's lines, but they don't have to be because you've smoked. They can just be because of genetics and thinner skin. Well, the gold standard, in my opinion, for this is the luminous laser, because this laser uh, has has been established for over a decade and they've enhanced the laser year after year. And it has two levels by which it will tighten 
the collagen in the skin. A superficial layer, a deeper, deeper layer, and certainly where lines are more res resistant, like say around the mouth, and it can really improve this area very well by tightening and stimulating collagen on a superficial and deeper level. Now sometimes the laser can also be used in the whole face and that can improve facial aging such as fine lines, it can reduce pore size. We can enhance the results of the laser by using platelet-rich plasma, a form of regenerative medicine, which means taking some of your own blood, spinning and concentrating your own PRP and then applying it back into the areas that have been treated with the laser. In the US, the, the platelet-rich plasma has been advertised or marketed as the vampire facelift, so it can be used as a treatment in its own right, but I've been using it for some time to enhance the result of laser resurfacing to heal you faster. Because laser resurfacing creates like an injury to the skin, platelet-rich plasma, your own growth factors can enhance the recovery from that. And we can put, combine that with radio frequency to, to, to give it in, enhanced result from, from the laser. What else can we do in terms of enhancing recovery and safety? Well, in terms of anesthetic, sedation anesthesia, what this means is you essentially sleep during the surgery. Sedation means for my patients, my anaesthetist would give you medicine through the arm, but you're breathing yourself, or your natural reflexes are working normally. You're essentially sleeping like you sleep at night, but brought on with medicines. And what that means is when we stop the sedation, even though this kind of surgery takes a number of hours, well, you can wake up over half an hour and walk out of the operating theater half an hour after the surgery. Now, this contrasts with general anesthetic, where your recovery really can be many hours. We can, and sedation can mean different things. Now, when you have, say, endoscopy in the hospital, sometimes the same doctor giving you the procedure will also give you sedation. And that can be a very simple sedation, just one medicine. The sedation we use for our patients is more sophisticated. It uses more than four types of like um, medications. They, they are tailored to the individual, and we really have customized this and have a patent pending on this, really to enhance the recovery for our patients. We've developed this over more than 10 years. There are other things that can be used to enhance recovery. Oxygen therapy in the immediate period after surgery well, giving you additional oxygen aids the recovery after any injury. And so we can use that as a tool to enhance recovery. Other techniques can also be reduced to reduce swelling, and such as lymphatic drainage, such as the use of medications and anti-inflammatories. All of these play a role in improving recovery after, after um, the vertical face restore. General anesthetic is how this surgery has traditionally been done. And more than 10 years ago, I also used general anesthetic for facelift surgery. And about a third of patients will have nausea and vomiting after general anesthetic. And we can really avoid that with sedation and twilight anesthesia because in, in our patients, less than 2% of patients will have those side effects and they're much milder than general anesthetic. The most serious issues with general anesthetic include a clot in the leg, a deep vein thrombosis, and that can result in um, allergies to inhale gases. But well, we can really avoid these by using sedation anesthesia because with sedation, your natural reflexes protect you against pooling of blood. And so in a way, it's a safer way of conducting the surgery. And for some patients having general anesthetic, well, you can feel quite washed out for one or two weeks. Sedation anesthesia is just a milder form of anesthetic. It takes less out of you. Now, of course, there is some recovery with the surgery. However, all the elements that we can do to enhance recovery have the potential to benefit you. Finally, what about maintenance? Well, having a vertical face restore will certainly enhance your appearance, However, every year, there's a little bit more aging. There can be a little bit more loose skin. You can lose a little bit of volume. So every year, there can be a little bit of change. And many of my patients come back to me once a year, and we just tweak things and modify things. 
One year we might do a little bit of volume, another year we might look at the skin, and if you maintain the results of face of surgery, they will certainly last for longer. There are measures that you can do, and that includes lifestyle measures, such as um, sleeping habits, drinking plenty of water, there's certain nutrition elements, and I talk about this in another video that I've made. Exercise also plays an important role. Lines associated with movement, volume loss, mild laxity of the skin, lines in the skin, the use of regenerative medicine. Well, all of these things, little bits of um, maintenance after facelift surgery will maintain the results for longer. In this patient, well, lines in the face associated with movement, often these are called dynamic lines. Botox is a very effective treatment for these lines. A little bit of volume loss, well, adding a little bit of fillers intermittently will smoothen out that volume loss. Although fat transfer is a very effective tool in order to restore volume in multiple areas of the face, a little bit of volume can be added with fillers very effectively. Now with surgery, we can take away centimeters of loose skin from the face and the neck. However, every year you can lose a little bit of that um, you can get a little bit more skin laxity. And radio frequency, well, this is a tool that I have in, in my clinic where we can just tighten millimeters. It won't take away centimeters, but it will benefit you in terms of long-term maintenance. So the vertical face restore, well, the, what is this? It's a holistic approach to look at facial aging, to look at each of the aspects of facial aging and enhance them. Now, not every single person is going to need all of these seven elements, but it's important to consider all of them in every patient to get the very best results. And of course, it needs to be tailored to the individual to give a natural appearance. And looking at old photographs to see how you've individually aged can be very helpful in doing that. So I've talked to you about these seven key aspects of the vertical facelift restore. Loss of the V-shaped jawline while lifting the face with a deep plane facelift, the more square-shaped fullness while reshaping the buccal fat, looking at the asymmetry, looking at the chin projection and perhaps using a chin implant to augment the chin, a more tired eye appearance while taking away loose skin but preserving the soft tissues is very important to make it look natural and lifting the tail of the brow such as a lateral brow lift deepen nasolabial lines, marinette lines, while lifting the face with restoring natural fat, fat transfer, and lengthening of the lip in some patients, shortening that distance with a lip lift to improve facial harmony, aging of the skin with fine lines and large pores, sun damage, while the CO2 laser can be very effective in enhancing that, and enhancing recovery and use of sedation and anesthesia to um, is also a very effective tool. And finally, maintenance after face of surgery and how that will benefit you. I do hope this information has been helpful for you. And if you have any thoughts or questions you'd like to ask, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you for watching.